the BC Patient Safety and Quality Council. Um, we are a provincial organization, so we work in different regions throughout um, the province. So mine is, of course, Vancouver Island, um, and I'm based out of Nanaimo. So I just wanted to start by acknowledging the traditional territory of the Kowakiwak, Nutelatooth, and Coast Salish peoples, whose, um, whose territory I'm privileged to live, work, and play on, and also acknowledging all the territories that you are calling in from today. Um, so in regard to questions throughout the um, presentation, um, if you want to pop them into the chat box throughout, um, but I will also allow time for questions at the end as well. Um, but I will open the chat box at the end. Um, so if you have questions throughout as I pre present a bunch of information to you, feel free to do that. Um, but basically, I talked to my, um, my, the manager of Patient Voices Network about what I was going to present to you today. And um, we kind of came up with the idea of basically giving you the orientation to Patient Voices Network. So this is the exact same information we would give to a new patient volunteer who has just signed up. Um, we call them patient partners. So um, the reason why we chose to do this is because it's basically the exact same information um, I would want to share with you regardless. But then um, if at any point you decide you want to volunteer with Patient Voices Network, then your orientation is done and you don't have to listen to all of this information again. So um, I'll make sure I share the sign up form for Patient Voices Network. If it's something that interests you, um, I'll share it with Marcy, I guess, um, so that it can be sent out to all of you. Um, and then if you just indicate in that form that, that you um, got this orientation in, in this session, then we can just skip that piece. Um, but with that being said, it's no pressure. It's just a way to avoid a step if, if that's something you choose to do. Um, and if it's something that, that sparks an interest in you as I present all this information. So um, let's see. Okay, so, so today I'll just be going over an overview of what Patient Voices Network is, and then we'll talk about who our patient partners are or our patient volunteers, who our healthcare partners are, and then how Patient Voices Network works. So every time you see PVN, that's Patient Voices Network. Um, responsibilities as a PVN member, not that you are yet, um, and not that you have to be by any means, um, but what that would look like, and then how we support our patient partners. So Patient Voices Network was created in 2009, and basically it's a community of volunteers. So our volunteers are patients, families, and caregivers who work with the healthcare system. Um, they partner with healthcare professionals to improve the healthcare system. So um, just to sort of bring this to life a little bit, it's, um, for example, a healthcare professional might say, um, we, we see an area for improvement in our services. And so um, they'll, they'll come to us and say, for example, um, we're looking for people with experience in this specific area of healthcare who can inform how we deliver our services. So then the, the role of Patient Voices Network is to find them um, a patient partner who could partner with them um, and work with them to improve those services. So really the goal of Patient Voices Network is to include the patient voice in these different um, quality improvement projects throughout the province. So the reason why there's a network is because we really want healthcare to reflect the needs and priorities of those it serves, so the patients. Um, and it's a way to get patients um, actively involved and engaged in the healthcare system. Um, it's also, a, um, a way to make patient and family-centered care the foundation of, um, of our work. And so um, joining the network is really just a way to, to make a difference in the healthcare system um, by working directly with different healthcare partners or healthcare professionals um, in various departments. And just to give you a sense, um, not that you need to retain any of this information, but just to give you a sense of sort of what our team looks like, because I'm only one person in a larger team. Um, 
we do have a management and support team. So um, we are um, the patient and public engagement team at the BC Patient Safety and Quality Council. And it's a lot of words and, and a big acronym. Um, but just to say that um, we're part of a larger team. We have program assistants. We have a project coordinator. We have a communication specialist who manages our newsletter that comes out every week to share different um, quality improvement projects that are going on throughout the province that our patient volunteers might want to get involved in. Um, our communication specialist also manages our website, um, which you can just do a Google search to find Patient Voices Network website and um, see the different sort of opportunities that are on there um, if you're interested afterwards. And then this next slide here is just um, what I mentioned earlier that we work um, in different regions across the province. So as you can see here, I am responsible for Vancouver Island region. So any opportunities that come up across the island, um, any healthcare partners that come from Island Health or any other organizations on the island um, come to me and I support them through finding a patient partner. And then any patient partners who sign up on the island, I support them as they get involved in engagements. And then we have Jamie, um, who's in the Lower Mainland or and Fraser Valley. We have Carol, who's in the interior. And we have Kathy, who's responsible for Northern Region. And we also have a provincial engagement leader. So there are also um, different quality improvement projects that come up that will include um, patient partners from across the entire province. So that might be, um, for example, um, if the Ministry of Health was doing um, an engagement and needed patient voices in, included in their work, then um, they might uh, do a broad, broader scope and reach out to anybody across the province and do a sort of virtual engagement. Um, although all, all engagements are pretty much virtual right now, but typically um, we'd have them in person and then the provincial ones would be um, virtual or maybe they'd meet once a year in Vancouver and um, and um, and meet maybe um, virtually otherwise. So there are lots of different ways that people are engaged across the province. And then we also have an oversight and advisory committee um, for Patient Voices Network. So the role of this committee is to provide guidance and recommendations to the network. So um, we, we really talk about this because um, half of this committee is patient partners. The other half is made up of representatives from um, health authorities, the Ministry of Health, our team at the council. Um, but it's really just to say that anything that goes through the network, all of our processes, any um, public documents or anything like that um, goes through this committee. So it's really just a way to, to walk the talk and make sure that um, the same way that we encourage healthcare partners to include patients in their work, we also want to include patients in our work. Um, so this is something that patients can get involved in. Um, if you're interested in this sort of, sort of work, um, patients usually serve a, a two-year term on this um, kind of committee. Um, so it comes up every couple of years to get involved in something like this. And then this is sort of the broader context that we sit in. So um, my employer is actually the BC Patient Safety and Quality Council rather than the Patient Voices Network. Um, the Patient Voices Network is something that our team supports, but um, that's as part of the larger council. So we call it the council for short, just because again, it is a really long name and the acronym's long. Um, so we usually just call it the council and that's what we're referring to. Um, but the council as a whole is really um, there to improve um, high quality, and, uh, like promote high quality and sustainable health care for all. Um, and so this is, this is the larger context and we have um, many teams as part of that make up the council um, and the, the patient and public engagement team is responsible for including um, patients in that work and doing the patient engagement piece, but we also have other teams that might do things like support um, healthcare partners in um, teaching them how to improve their services or teaching them um, ways to engage and um, they, they work with them in different ways. So it's just to say that the council is sort of the, the broader 
um, organization that's that's at play here and then the one team within it which is the team that i'm on supports the patient voices network so it can be kind of confusing um, i was confused at first when i um, i actually started as a patient partner um, and i thought that um, it was just patient voice patient voices network and i didn't really understand how the council fit in so um, I hope I explained that okay, just that um, the Patient Voices Network is supported by the council, um, but it's really the, the council is much broader um, and does a lot of different work in terms of quality improvement across the province. And then this, this slide um, it just aims to explain it a little bit further um, to show you why um, the council supports Patient Voices Network and sort of why it fits in. So the council supports improvement projects with healthcare providers to enhance the quality of services through education, resources, and best practices. So that's what we do as a whole um, in, in a variety of different ways across the teams. And then um, the Patient Voices Network specifically is there to um, build relationships between healthcare partners and patients with lived experience to achieve those goals. So the Patient Voices Network is more specific in that it's, it's um, focusing on patient engagement specifically. So I think I touched on this a little bit earlier, um, but who is a patient partner? So a patient partner is basically just a, a volunteer who has experience with the healthcare system. And something important to note here is that patient partners um, don't have to have direct experience. So it can also be um, supporting a loved one through um, health healthcare experiences. It can be a caregiver, a family member. It, it really is meant to be a broad term. And the reason why we use patient partner um, is because it's, it's a term that our network of patients decided on. So it's just something that, that we use, but it really um, can be considered as sort of a broad term. So really anybody could be a patient partner. I think we've all interacted with the healthcare system at some point um, or we've supported somebody through through the healthcare system. So um, when we first look at being a patient partner, we might think, um, you know, we, maybe our area of, of healthcare is very specific, but um, once you actually see engagement opportunities coming up, you might sit, you might um, think, oh, I, I actually have a lot to say in that area because I know somebody who um, went through that experience. So that's also how you could be a patient partner in that area. And then our healthcare partners are any um, health focused organizations who are looking to include that patient voice. Um, so mainly um, the majority of our healthcare partners come from our local health authority, or sorry, our regional health authorities. So for example, um, most of the healthcare partners who come to me um, looking to include patients in their work is um, Island Health. Um, so it'll be different departments at Island Health um, coming from all across um, the, the whole region, um, looking to include patients in various parts of their work. Um, but it can also be other health-focused organizations like the Ministry of Health, um, academic institutions, so UVic could come um, and ask to include patients in some of their work or research organizations or nonprofit organizations. So these are all um, just examples of, of who our healthcare partners might be and who you might see opportunities come up with. Um, it's just any organization with a health focus. And so this is just to show you um, how we're situated in the, the broader healthcare system. So um, we are funded by the Ministry of Health um, and the Ministry of Health is um, responsible for provincial legislation and regulations. And so we consider ourselves sort of an arm's length organization from the Ministry of Health because we are funded by them, we report to them, but we're not directly um, employed by them, if that makes sense. And then for the BC Health Authorities, as I just mentioned, we um, work closely with them. So we build really strong relationships with, the, with our health authorities um, regionally, like Interior Health, Island Health, Fraser Health, Northern Health, Vancouver Coastal Health. 
Um, we also have relationships with Providence Healthcare, which is a faith-based um, health organization that um, operates St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver. Also the Provincial Health Services Authority um, and First Nations Health Authority. So these are the different um, health authorities that, that we work with who um, their role is really in service delivery within the healthcare system. So that's why um, it's usually different departments um, within these health authorities that come to us looking to include the patient voice because they're wanting to improve service delivery and have that um, perspective as part of their decision making. And then another way to um, get involved as patients is through patient-oriented research. So this is something that um, we touch on just because it's, it's, um, it can be advertised through the Patient Voices Network website. So you'll, you'll see um, on our website, we'll have like research opportunities. Um, we don't directly support these opportunities because it's a separate organization, um, but we do share them on our website. So basically patient-oriented research is when patients are actually part of the research team um, rather than just participants. So if you're involved in um, patient-oriented research, you might be designing the research questions um, or helping in writing the paper um, after the results have um, been collected and analyzed, or you might be um, you know, sharing, sharing the information. So this is just another way to get involved um, and you can, look um, look for more information about this through the VC support unit website um, and, and find ways to get involved or you can look on the Patient Voices Network website for some opportunities that get advertised through us. And then this is our three-year strategic plan. Sorry, the um, I don't know if the font's um, small, but I'll read them out to you. But um, these, this is our three-year strategic plan that um, is from 2017 to 2020. So they're actually working on um, working with all of our stakeholders to develop a new strategic plan right now. Um, but these are our current um, top priorities. So the first one is all about evaluation. So evaluating the impact of patient engagement activities. So it's really just getting a better understanding of how our program is doing and um, if patient engagement is really making a difference. And then the second one is to increase the capacity of healthcare um, and patient partners to support authentic engagement. And then the third one is to diversify our membership so that it represents um, BC's population. So um, some, some populations we've been focusing on are men, so this is great, um, youth and Indigenous populations. Um, so we've really um, put an effort into that as well as um, looking at the diversity of healthcare experiences. So um, acute and community care, um, all of those different types of healthcare experiences that um, represent the population as well. And then this slide is just to talk about person and family centered care. So um, the reason we talk about this is because um, patient and public engagement is really the foundation. Um, this is really the foundation of patient and public engagement work. Um, and it's the reason why it's so important. So um, it's really saying that we're putting patients and families at the forefront of their health and care and um, making sure they have an equal role to play in their health um, in their healthcare and that of the healthcare system. So person and family centered care has four core principles, uh, respect and dignity, information sharing. So that's making sure that um, healthcare professionals are giving you all the information you need to make informed decisions about your care. Um, participation, so making sure you're involved in that decision making process and that you're able to identify things that matter to you in terms of your care. And then collaboration. So this is really emphasizing um, working with healthcare patients and healthcare professionals working together as opposed to one for the other. So this is this is the goal, um, and it's it and it's why patient engagement is so important because this is what we're always striving for, um, and and it is the focus and the foundation of our work. Um, and this, is, this slide is just to show how, um, 
how people work together in these patient engagements or the goal of how we want everyone to work together in patient engagement. So we really want to focus on the dialogue, um, bringing people together to collaborate with an open mind um, and really learning from each other um, and sharing experiences so that we can come to solutions together. Um, and then and as opposed to debate where we come in um, hoping to, you know, ha have the right answer and, and win and, and those kind of things where it's more closed minded. We really focus um, our efforts on having a partnership and that's kind of the, the benefit of Patient Voices Network that we are sort of a neutral third party in this process. So if you were a patient partner on, on an engagement opportunity and you felt like every time you went into the room, um, your, your experience wasn't being listened to and maybe um, it was a room full of um, people where it was really hard to get your voice in and, and when you did raise your voice to contribute, um, uh, it wasn't you know, being incorporated into the decision making and that's something that you could always come to um, me as your engagement leader and we could work through it together. So it's kind of a benefit, sometimes it's uncomfortable to, to talk directly to the healthcare partner about um, those kind of challenging dynamics. So this is something that we also strive for and, and we um, talk about um, in terms of working together. And then public participation. So this is just our definition. Um, so public participation is basically just any process that involves the public in problem solving or decision making. So of course this is um, the bulk of our work because we include patients in different um, quality improvement projects. And the reason why we include this here is just because you'll see a variety of different terms used um, that mean the same thing. So things like public involvement, um, citizen, public or community engagement, and patient engagement. And we use the term patient engagement, um, but this is what we this is what we mean. So anytime you see patient engagement or hear me say patient engagement, this is really what I'm meaning, just involving the public um, throughout this process. And then this slide, um, there's a lot going on in this slide, so hopefully I can simplify it a bit, but um, this is a, a tool that we use a lot in Patient Voices Network. So um, it's just something we always um, go over. And basically it is, um, it's called the IEP2 Spectrum of Public Participation. And it is a way to um, identify and set expectations for how you'll be engaged in different um, quality improvement projects or we call them engagement opportunities. Um, and it's not to say that one is better than the other, it's really just to make it clear um, and to set expectations for, for you when you are getting involved. So for example, you might be really busy and, and um, going on lots of trips in the summer. So maybe you wanna be, you know, in, you, you still want to volunteer, but you wanna be volunteering in something that's less involved just because you have less time. Um, or maybe you see um, an opportunity that really, really interests you and you wanna make sure you're really involved in that because you feel really passionate about the work. So it's really just a way um, for you to know how your voice is gonna be included. So this is something that um, basically on our website, we have um, an outline of each engagement opportunity. So it's kind of like an invitation. It tells you what the um, project is all about. Um, and the goal of the project and how you'll be included. And it also includes whatever level of, um, whatever level it falls under on this spectrum so that you have an idea of how you'll be included in the project. So um, starting on the left side, we have the level of inform and that would be just when um, someone's delivering information to you, but you aren't able to give feedback. So it's things like, um, giving you a fact sheet or maybe attending a lecture, um, anything like that where you're really just taking in information but you aren't able to um, provide feedback or make an actual change in that work. Um, and then we have consult. So this is where, um, where your, your feedback is taken um, and, and they will in, um, let you know how that impacted their decision making. So, but they, but they might not include it um, 
they might not include it to the full extent. So it might be part of a, a larger discussion. It might be one piece of, of um, feedback that they include in their decision making. So it could be things like surveys or focus groups um, where they're collecting feedback, um, but there's usually a lot more to it than just that. Um, but, but they should um, provide back to you how, say, the survey results influence their decision making overall. And then we have involved. So this is where um, you're working with the um, healthcare partner a little bit more um, intensively. Um, so these are things like workshops, um, and and it's it's more intentional in that um, your feedback will influence the alternative. So they might have um, you know. A, a bunch of different options for how they're going to proceed and your feedback will be as part of some of them, um, but it might not necessarily be implemented. Um, it could depend on a variety of other factors as well, um, but it is more, more intensive um, and, and more involved. And then collaborate is really when you start working closely with the healthcare partner. So these are usually things like ongoing committees. So you might um, be involved in like a one-year committee where you're giving feedback all the time. Um, and in this case, um, the promise to you is really that um, your feedback is used to the maximum extent possible. So unless there's, you know, budget constraints or, or some sort of constraint, um, your feedback will be taken in. Um, and then empower is when they just say, we have this decision to be made and now you get to make it. <laughs> and I've never seen one at the level of empower um, because it's usually sort of an unrealistic um, thing. There's usually so many factors that are involved in decision making that um, it's not necessarily always possible to do that. So usually the, um, the engagements that I see are at the level of consult, involve, or collaborate. Um, we don't see a lot at inform either, just because that's not really engagement. Um, you might see the level of inform if we're offering a course out to patient partners or something like that. But other than that, um, it should really be at the level of consult, involve, or collaborate. And so what this would look like um, actually in terms of engagement opportunities on our website are things like surveys or interviews. Um, so people might, or healthcare partners might um, send out a, a survey to everybody who has um, had knee surgery lately and um, ask them how maybe say the, the pamphlet that they got sent home with was helpful or how it could be improved. Um, that's just a, an example that comes to mind, but it could be about anything. Um, focus groups, uh, advisory committees. You will see a lot of advisory committees and working groups um, where patient partners are involved um, more on an ongoing basis. Um, roundtable discussions. So we'll have um, roundtable discussions where um, say there, there's a topic of interest and then the patient voice is included in there. So, um, so there could be a discussion among um, every sort of healthcare professional that's impacted by this one area of care and then also a patient who has experienced that care. Um, there's opportunity to be patient speakers. Um, so different conferences come up um, and, and often they'll look for patients to speak on, on that area as well. Um, reviewers, so sometimes there's documents to review. So say going back to that knee um, surgery, um, example that they, they might uh, redesign a pamphlet that they send home with all their patients and then maybe um, patients are involved in writing that or involved in reviewing the new um, pamphlet to see to see how it um, how it's uh, readable and and how helpful it is and those kind of things um, the other things are um, patient journey mapping that's another one you can look at on the website um, there are some really great examples of patient journey mapping where basically a patient talks through their entire journey of walking through the healthcare system. Um, so it could be things like I went into their emergency room and I um, got turned away and then I had to um, go back again three times or something like that. Um, and then you can really sort of see the challenges um, clearly of um, somebody who's walking through that, that um, patient journey. 
So those are just some examples of opportunities that do come up often. Um, and then this is just to outline our process. So basically, um, again, I'm an engagement leader. So as an engagement leader, a healthcare partner would come to me and say, hey, Ashley, I have um, this um, opportunity, or maybe I'll, I'll continue with the same example just to make it easy. If they say, um, I'm, I'm redesigning the pamphlet that I send home um, with patients um, after they have knee surgery and we really want patient partners, I would, I would talk with them through that and I would say, okay, um, at what stage are you in? Are you ready to have patients involved? Um, can their input actually influence the outcome? And we would make sure all of those things are in place. Um, when we're not doing virtual, I'd make sure um, they have um, budget set aside to pay for your parking or pay for any meals if um, meetings go over meal times and things like that. So we'd make sure all of the logistics are in place. We would make sure the, the engagement is really well defined. And then the volunteer inv invitation or engagement opportunity goes on our website. So it might be called something like um, knee, knee surgery um, pamphlet reviewer or something. Um, and then that, that gets advertised on our website and it goes out to all of our patient partners in the newsletter. And then patient partners who have had that experience might apply and put their name forward. Um, I don't like using the word apply, I shouldn't have said that sounds like a job, but um, so they would put their name forward, um, expressing interest in that opportunity. And then the healthcare partner um, that speaks to different patient partners, um, they, might be, they might have the capacity to bring on all of them, or they might have to talk to each of them and find sort of a best fit if they are only able to bring on a certain number. Um, and then after that decision has been made, they work with you to prepare. So in, in terms of a meeting, say um, you were meeting with healthcare professionals about redesigning this pamphlet, then they would want to make sure they meet with you ahead of time and give you all the background information so that when you walk into that first meeting, you feel prepared. Um, and then that's when um, you really start working with them. So you would start going to the meetings and you would start um, working directly with that healthcare partner to improve that service or improve that pamphlet um, and then get it back out to the public um, and then it would be implemented and then our expectation is that the healthcare partner makes sure they give you the final results or let you know how um, that is implemented and how how it's going. So that's sort of the whole process for an engagement and how it works. Um, from the back end and then and then how you see it coming up on the website. So once you see it come up on the website, um, you can know that we have, you know, talked with them and, and made sure everything's in place. You can also see at the bottom of each engagement opportunity which engagement leader is supporting it. Um, so typically for any, any engagements on the island, um, you should see my name unless I'm away or something. Um, but that's kind of how it works um, from, the, from start to finish. And then this is what it looks like on the website. So um, as I mentioned, they're called engagement opportunities on the website. Um, and you can search by region. So as, um, as you're calling in from the island, you would look at the Vancouver Island region opportunities, as well as you could look at the provincial opportunities. Um, and then on the right in really small print are um, patient oriented research opportunities or what we call external engagement opportunities. So those are ones that aren't directly supported by us, but again, we, we will advertise them. So they, they might not be um, actual patient engagement work, but they will be um, including the patient in some way um, in terms of, of healthcare. So there's lots of different areas to look on the website if you're interested in, in doing any of this type of volunteer work. And then this screenshot is just of an opportunity invitation. So this is sort of what it looks like. Um, if you were to scroll down, you'd see a lot more information. Um, but basically it just outlines the, the volunteer opportunity. And then there's usually a deadline to um, put your name forward. Um, so if you were interested, you'd click that RSVP now button. Um, and then you'd give them a little bit of information about yourself and why you're interested. Um, it tells you um, the lead organization or department that's doing the engagement. 
and the AIM, um, if you were able to go further down, it would show you that um, level of engagement on the IAP2 spectrum. It would show you the background information, um, and again, the engagement leader supporting it. So it, would, it hopefully gives you a good idea of, of um, what it will look like. Um, and if it doesn't, you can always email me and, and ask for more information. Um, and then this is just something we go over, um, which I could probably skip through it today, but it's basically just um, we, we tell um, our patient partners, um, we provide them with a document based that patient partners actually put together because um, they found when they were in an engagement, they didn't really know how to introduce themselves. Um, so, and that's not true for everyone, and it's by no means anything you would have to follow, but it's just kind of a support tool for anybody who felt uncomfortable in terms of how to, how to introduce themselves as a patient partner when they're in a room full of healthcare partners. Um, but it's something that um, I could go over more in detail if, if um, anybody were to sign up for Patient Voices Network. Um, nothing you really need to know right now. Um, but then just if you were to sign up for Patient Voices Network, if this is something that interests you, just knowing that it's very partnership focused, um, being committed to long term change, we just say this because uh, change tends to be relatively slow. Um, so it's just in terms of having patience um, and knowing that your input does make a difference. Um, sometimes it just takes a long time to be able to see it. So we want to make sure, again, that we're following up with people. Um, and letting them know where things are at so that you so you don't feel discouraged because it can be disheartening if you spend a lot of time on, in, on, on an engagement opportunity and then um, don't know what happened with it. Um, embracing diverse opinions and opportunities. Uh, value for volunteers. So we really want to make our volunteers feel valued. If you ever weren't feeling valued, that's something you could always come to me about and um, you know we could find a solution and figure out what was going on. And then most importantly, it shouldn't be at the bottom of the, of the list is practicing self-care. So um, given that we're all you know, patient partners and healthcare um, experiences come up, um, lots of times you know, we'll be feeling really well and sign up for a bunch of different opportunities and then uh, we get sick or things change and, and we want to make sure everybody feels comfortable to step away from anything um, so they aren't pushing themselves um, so that's something really important, and um, this is just something that if you were to sign up, we just have a volunteer agreement form, um, which I won't really go over just because it, it's basically just about conflict of interest. It's just an online form, um, and it's about how to, how to show up in different engagement opportunities. It's something that we would go over if you were to sign up, um, something that we go over it in more detail um, once you actually uh, take part in an engagement opportunity. And then we do have some supports available. So we have networking sessions, so opportunities to connect patient partners to each other. So on an ongoing basis, you'll be part of engagement opportunities, but the networking sessions are a chance for you to connect with each other. Um, learning cafes, we have different learning opportunities that come up um, about once a month on different um, healthcare topics. Uh, skill building workshops come up, different webinars, and then individual support. So again, that's my role is to support you throughout this process. And that is it. So that's basically a lot of information and I hope that it wasn't too overwhelming. Um, but I will open it up for questions and open up the chat box. 